Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Can we build computers based on quantum mechanical principles? Right, mm -hmm. right, because if I want my digits of zeros and ones that have spin up and spin down would be one way of saying that I have that. But I also have an addition to the mechanical, or actually, of course, electronic computers of just specifying ones and zeros. I will have a linkage between this zero and this one, say, mm -hmm. or spin up and spin down, which makes a whole dimension, a whole other dimension of what a quantum computer presumably does. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, as, as we speak, I understand nobody has yet built a quantum computer. That's what I understand. There's actually private groups and some universities working on it, and there was actually work kind of going back to um, the mid and late 80s, like um, uh, the Air Force was working on trying to build a quantum computer with organic materials. Mm -hmm. So there's been all kinds of different efforts. I don't know if that was still classified, mm -hmm. probably not. It was a public mm -hmm. meeting. But it's interesting because then what do you say about consciousness? Uh, can you build a conscious computer? Well, what I say is called the Turing uh, principle, or the mm -hmm. Turing machine. Alan Turing uh, being Alan Turing, one of the great inventors of the computer oh, back amazing. in the 1940s. Yes, and he decoded the uh, uh, Russian, uh, uh, the German Enigma device, mm -hmm. and that movie, if you see it, um, uh, on his life is yeah. fantastic mm -hmm. and very well done. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, he was saying, I think I can build a computer that will fool you as to being conscious. Well, right. at the time it was at SRI International, there was a computer program on the DARPA net. Because mm -hmm. the DARPA net sort of led to the, uh, uh, the internet. internet. Yes, yeah. indeed. So yeah. that was the origin of the mm -hmm. internet. Yep. And and actually in those days... You could have a conversation with... You have a conversation with someone in New York and it's all on a teletype, right. clicky keys going yep. on. But it, uh, it, uh, in the, that, they had a, a, a game, a computer game. Eliza, she, is that? Eliza, and yes. you ask Eliza questions mm -hmm. like, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. Eliza says, fine, thank you very much. And mm -hmm. the answers are actually, you know, you could ask about five to ten questions, mm -hmm. and you could probably say it was not a very verbal person, yeah. but Eliza, you could probably fool a person. Many people were, because as I understand it, Eliza was based on a principle of psychotherapy developed by Carl Rogers, client-centered yes. therapy, where you, you sort of turn the question around and ask it again. Yes, you do, mm -hmm. and that's, well, if, if you ask Eliza, how are you, then Eliza says, well, how are you doing? Well, yeah. how many people do that? Yeah. Almost everybody. Mm -hmm. so so we, we had fun with Eliza, but what my answer to that is, since psychic phenomena exist, mm -hmm. you're not going to probably build a psychic computer. Even with quantum entanglement, mm. even with that, I don't think you're going to uh, build all aspects of what consciousness really is. But if one could build a computer that could demonstrate ESP, you might agree it actually was conscious. I might agree that it could fool me. Yeah. I might agree that Turing could fool me if he could add if he could add uh, ESP to his computer, which I don't think he was going to do anyway. Mm -hmm. But that's a very interesting question because